Welcome to A-Frame Lesson 1.4. In this video, we're going to explore how to build more complex objects using those basic A-Frame components, and also discuss the entity object, uh, which will allow us to encapsulate uh, whatever we built as one object. So let's get to it. So to kind of set the stage, uh, I've already kind of added some things to the replit really just in terms of the plane and the sky. I've given the plane a picture as well as the sky, and this is what it looks like. So what I want to do is I want to do somewhat of a winter scene. So we're going to try to build a snowman uh, using the various basic objects. So obviously at this point, I don't think we'll need a box right now unless later on we want to try to create a gift <laughs> as part of this winter scene. But we're going to focus strictly on the uh, snowman. So I'm going to get rid of everything. We're going to focus on the body, uh, which essentially would end up being three spheres. So let me go ahead and uh, copy that. Let me also change this over to white. Uh, so we're going to do three spheres. Oops, forgot to put take that first bracket. So let's put that in. Now, obviously, if I leave it like this, the three spheres are going to be on top of each other. Uh, so we have to somehow shift them. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this one uh, a little lower. Uh, let's see. Well, actually, I guess we could do it like this. Really, like I mentioned in an earlier video, the order in which your components uh, reside doesn't dictate the order they uh, exist in the world. That's what the position attribute does. So let's kind of move this one to... Let's start off at 0 0.5. And let's make this the biggest one. So it's the one that's closest to the ground because it's 0 0.5 away from the ground. And it's going to be the largest. So that means that this one should be a little further up. So let's move this up to 225. And let's make the radius a little smaller. That way, if you kind of imagine, so the bottom part of the snowman will be big. Then the next one's a little smaller, and then you could kind of guess that the, the next one should be even a little smaller and a little further up. So let's do that. And let's say 0 0.85. And let's take a look at it. So let's actually also position it at 0, 0, 0. Now, if you recall, because I position it at, at a Z of zero, that means we're essentially right on top of it. So I'm going to back out to it. Uh, let's take a little look-see from different angles. That looks pretty good for right now. Uh, so the next thing we have to add uh, is we have to add some eyeballs. So let's go back to our code. And let's do the eyeballs with two more spheres. So I'm just actually going to borrow these two. And just for the sake of kind of being able to share with whoever is looking at your code, uh, we'll say snowman, snow person, <laughs> snow person, yeah, we'll say snowman, snowman body. And this next section will be, actually, you know what? We'll just leave it as eyes. How's that? <laughs> we know we're building a snowman. It's also less writing. Okay, so let's see what we can do with the eyeballs. So we notice that this is the sphere that's at the very top. Uh, so we notice that's at 3.5. So you kind of figure these eyeballs should be about the same height uh, as that uh, last sphere that's there. Uh, let's see what else do we need to change. We also need to make the spheres black or charcoals. And we have to make the sphere smaller. Uh, so let's say 0 0.15, 0 0.5. And what are, what are the modifications we, do we have to make? Uh, we may have to bring them forward a little bit in terms of the world. Because uh, notice, the body's at 0. If we leave the eyeballs, which are small, at at zero, that means they're actually going to be inside of this sphere and we won't see it. Actually, with the value of one, we still might not be able to see it. So uh, let's check it out. 
bring it back. Okay, so it looks like, actually, no, we do see them. Uh, and let's just take a look from the side. Uh, looks pretty good. So what I'm noticing is we only see one eyeball. That's because we didn't offset the, uh, the x value. So let's do this one at a negative, oops, negative 0 0.25 off the center, and we'll put this at a 0 0.25 off the center. 0 0.25, put the period on the spot. And let's see what that looks like. Back it up. All right, cool. So we got the two eyeballs. Um, I think at the very least, we have to add a nose. <clears throat> So for the nose, I want to go back to a frame, and let's look at the a cone uh, primitive. And what you'll see here is that a cone takes two additional attributes: the radius of the bottom and the radius of the top. So let's go ahead and grab that. Matter of fact, we might even grab that same color of tomato. <laughs> and let's put that here. Let's put a little comment. For whoever is looking at our code, this is going to be the nose now. All right, so let's take a. Oh, yeah, I just noticed this doesn't have a position. So that's going to cause us a problem. So let's go and actually put the position in. And let's see, where should this be? So let's start off with zero, which will be dead center. I think that works. Uh, a zero, uh, three point. 2, 5. Now you might think, well, why 2, 5? You've made these three, uh, 3.5 and 3.5. Well, if I made this 3.5, the nose would be at the same level as, as the eyes. That would seem kind of awkward. Noses are always below the eye. So I'm just going to simply take it down a little bit. And as for uh, the Y position, I think we'll keep it at the same uh, position of 1. <clears throat> uh, in terms of the radius, Let's kind of reduce this. This feels like it's going to be a little bit too much. You know, let's leave it like that. Let's see what it looks like. <laughs> I'm sure we're going to have to do some modifications to it. Uh, so a couple modifications. Obviously, the cone's too big. And it also has to be rotated. So let's reduce the, the bottom of the radius of the cone to 0.1 and the top 0 0.01. Now you might think, well, how is he getting these values out of nowhere? Obviously, I've, I've ran through this example already, so that's the reason I'm, I know to choose these numbers. Uh, but again, with a lot of trial and error, you kind of figure out um, what numbers to use to make it look the way it's supposed to. Okay, so the nose is great. I, I think it's perfect. It's right up close to the face. Uh, the only problem is that it needs to get rotated. Now, again, another chance to practice rotation. So because I want to bring the tip forward, that means if I put a line through the middle of this uh, cone, that means I'm rotating on the x-axis. Again, rotation is something definitely you have to practice with uh, to kind of get that sense of which axis you're rotating and in which direction. So let's do rotation of 90, 0, and 0. And let's check it out again. Bring it back some. And there we go. All right, so uh, we have our nose, we have our eyeballs, we have our um, body. <laughs> so I think the last thing we could probably add to our uh, person, our, our snow person, is let's add some arms. And for arms, we're just going to use the cylinder which I wish we would have kept, but that's okay though. We're gonna go here and we'll just grab a, a basic line here. And I think this would be a nice basic line. Uh, maybe even keep that same color of crimson. But I think brown might be better, so I might just adjust that. So let's put it at brown. Brown. And let's see, how about for the height? What does that look like? Um, let's reduce the height down a little bit. And in terms of the radius, let's not make it so wide. <clears throat> if you recall, um, the sample cylinder is rather thick. So let's bring this down to zero, uh, one, uh, 
0.15. And what else? And oh, we got to do some positioning. Uh, again, if we don't have positions, it's going to end up at our default position in the world of 0, 0, 0. And that's not what we want. OK, so the arm should be in the middle sphere. So we could kind of imagine that it should be somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, 2.25. I'm actually going to take it up a little higher. Uh, and just kind of knowing the same thing that happened with our eyes, I'm going to offset one of the arms in the negative direction of the x, and I'm going to offset the other one in the positive. Again, just to make it symmetrical. And then I'm going to do 2.75, 2.75. And I think we could keep the z-axis of 0, uh, just as it is. Right, so let's give it a try. Let's see what happens. Bring it back some. Awesome. All right, so uh, let's take a look from the sides. Uh, the cylinders are, the, are there. Uh, but much like uh, the cone, we have to rotate it. Then the nice thing about this one is this is not going to be a rotation of 90 or 45. We should do it at, at some other angle so it seems a little more natural. So let's say rotation equals. Now let's take a quick look at that again. So because I want to rotate it somewhat in the clockwise or counter uh, clockwise or counterclockwise, that means I'm sticking a, a pole from me into the world and spinning it along that axis. That happens to be the z-axis. So let's do a 0, 0, and 60. And let's just take a look at one of them. And there you go. So now this arm's sticking straight out. And we could do the same thing for the other one. Except this time we're going to do it a negative 60. So that way it rotates in the opposite direction. And there we go. We have our snow person. So as you can see, I mean, you could continue adding to this. Uh, and this is a way that you can build some more complex objects just using the basic components. Now, the last part of this video is how can we now take this you know, object that we built and then duplicate it uh, and then reposition it? So A-Frame offers another object called an entity. Uh, make sure I spelled it right. <laughs> entity. And I'm going to close it down here. Now, if you're familiar with web development, you could think of the entity kind of like a div uh, where it acts as a container. So I'm going to tab this a little bit. Uh, so this entity now encompasses this whole uh, slew of components. Now, this is nice because we can do this now. I can copy that whole entity. And if I want to reposition this uh, complex object, this snow, snowman, somewhere else, I can give the entity a position. So let's do that. Let's say uh, position of 0, and we'll say 0 as well, and we'll just say negative 10. So we throw it back into the world. And this is that new snow person uh, that we've added, and we still got the other one here. Now, additionally, what you can do with this, and I'm going to do this with yet another one, is that in addition to changing the position, you can also change the rotation. And that is nice, because you, now you're, you're rotating the whole entity and not having to worry about the individual rotations of each object inside of it. Uh, so let's rotate this one, let's say... Uh, pull through the top of the head, so that means in the, in the y-axis. And let's position this maybe a little bit to the right and not as far back. OK, so that's the second snowman that we copied and pasted. And now this is the other one with rotation. And hopefully you can appreciate them. I mean, you could definitely fill the whole world with uh, a bunch of these snowmen, uh, all at different uh, you know, positions, different rotations. 
in a future lesson, we'll talk about scale. Uh, you can actually change the scales of your objects. So hopefully you've enjoyed this. Let's get back to our presentation. Let's review what we've done. So in this video, we saw how we can create a more uh, complex object using just those basic A-frame components. Uh, using the entity object as a way to contain this new object that we built from the basic components, we're able to move the entity around uh, as well as rotate the entity uh, with pretty much um, just a couple lines of instructions, so a couple of changes of the attribute. So hopefully you're excited about trying to build your first virtual world. Enjoy.